Dynamic intros, a term used by Yakuza fans for boss fights or large enemy encounters that have animated intros that naturally transition into gameplay. Having these introductions before fights are an exciting way to show to the player who they're about to completely clap and getting them hyped up to do so. Most Yakuza fans, myself included, like to froth at the mouth over these intros and understandably so. Ever since Yakuza 3 and the PS3, these intros have seen a steady but much appreciated evolution with varying styles depending on the game and over time they've improved in many different ways, whether it be in a technical way or a visual way. So, as someone who has spent a lot of time staring at the same intros over and over, I thought it'd be interesting to share some of my observations as well as doing a little display on how each game in the series has handled these intros. We'll start with a brief history lesson. Before Yakuza 3, there was Yakuza 1 and 2 on the PS2 and RGG Kenzan, all of which had intros to their fights but weren't handled exactly the same way as we know them today. Every encounter was given the same treatment, whether it be a random encounter or a boss fight, which does sound good on paper, but that does also mean that even the final boss has the same way to do things. To explain the style, the game would typically fade to black after a cutscene or whatever, then from the black screen would just splash the title card of whoever it is you're fighting, then would fade into gameplay where everyone would just be sort of standing around for a bit and maybe there was a little animation or something and then you'd fight. Kenzan did the exact same thing, although when the title card would splash onto the screen, the background was slightly transparent so you could see what was going on at the same time, as well as having the text be in the center of the screen. Now we all know that you is a three. Sucks, but what did it do to revolutionize the introductions for the series? Yakuza 3 actually had the exact same style as Kenzan all the way up until the final boss, which I would just like to preface this by saying that I'm going to spoil it and pretty much every other final boss in the series because they're all the most interesting intros to look at, so if you don't want spoilers then I'm sorry. But anyway, how did the final boss against Mine go? Well rather than interrupting things with a stupid loading screen, instead we got a little cutscene, a cool splash of Mine's title card, and then behind the title card they applied a red filter that brightened up everything, had a bit of a slow motion to suspend them in the air for a bit, and then boom! right into the fight. I'm sure when RGG Studio added that to the game back then, they're all standing up and cheering, popping bottles of champagne and shit everywhere. But the only downside to the original PS3 version was that the title cards were only in Japanese, and instead, if you were playing in English or whatever other language, you had to look at these bloody subtitles at the bottom of your screen to see what was going on. Thankfully, in the remastered version of the game, we do get translated title cards, although because it is the remastered version of the game, that means we get the sick glitch that I'm sick of bloody dealing with in editing, where thanks to the doubled frame rate, Every time the camera cuts, we get one in-between frame that is just randomly looking at something else and it's really goddamn annoying, but oh well. Rather observant fans will know, or at least remember of the controversy, sort of, it's not really one, but whatever, of the remastered trilogy's font usage. It's a small thing, but rather than using what is jokingly known as the Yakuza font, being Edo, SZ, or Edo, Skidu, I don't know. Anyway, the Yakuza font. They instead use the this font, whatever it is, which I believe is simply because it kind of matches the style of the font used in the Japanese for the title cards. We could very well just ask someone who worked in the game why they changed the font, but I'm a bit worried about being stabbed over the internet, so I'm, I'm not going to do that. Regardless, Mine's intro set the standard for the series on how to do a proper introduction to a boss fight, as well as a theme that for some reason never occurred to me until recently that all encounters across all the games have the exact same style of intro, but the dynamic intros are ones that have properly animated cutscenes attached to them. Now, for Yakuza 4, they actually went sicko mode, and rather than making one intro, they instead decided to make intros for all of the important fights in the game to get the player all hyped up to bash some skulls. Yakuza 4 ended up having the exact same style of intro as Yakuza 3, unsurprisingly, given that the two games are basically the same. It also had the same differences in the remastered version, although in the final fight as Tanimura, they added a little shouting from your boy, which meant that there was at least one scream for each of the final boss intros, which allows certain people on YouTube to create create some pretty cinematic edits. <laughs> Thanks, RGG Studio. Dead Souls is also pretty much the exact same, but it says Versus before the title card pops up. Anyway, moving on from that game, we have Yakuza 5. It, again, is pretty identical to the previous games. One fairly minute difference is that the filter behind the text is sort of yellowish, maybe a bit more white, whatever color, it's just, it's not as red now. Again, another small difference is one most of you won't care about because it was the PS3 version, but rather than the subtitles appearing at the bottom, at least they're a little above the title card, so you don't have to snap your neck the bottom of the screen. The final noticeable difference is also exclusive to just the Japanese version, but it did sort of change things for all future iterations. Rather than the text going surname, first name, it comes down in one image. Like that. Regardless of their reasoning for this, it does mean that when the text comes down onto the screen, it comes down in one go, further adding to that juicy impact that the intros have. Up next is a game that I'm sure a lot of people watching this haven't played, but it's Ishin, the Japanese only spin-off. <laughs> Thank you. 
This game set the theme which Zero and Kiwami followed as well as, in my opinion, influenced the rest of the series in how to approach the cinematic aspect of these intros. To start, Ishinomura or less ditch that filter in the background with it only using a sort of brightening filter for a lack of better term to sometimes just brighten up the shot temporarily for better visibility such as here for example. Ishin also did a thing which as I was typing the script uh, just realized that Yakuza 5 didn't have and that is that the subtitle not the subtitles but the subtitle that doesn't make any sense, of the bosses comes in first behind the main title. Then there's the main title which splashes onto the symbol, badge, emblem or whatever you want to call it which actually does a little spin into place first. The emblem is accompanied by a red circle which expands then fades out along with the emblem, leaving the title card just there in the foreground to leave plenty of room for you to stare at the main thing Ishin did right. The posing. Before Ishin, let's be real, some of the poses that the characters found themselves in were awkward as hell. To me, it would sometimes feel like they would animate the cutscene and finish it, then decide where would be an appropriate spot to splash the title and do a bit of slow-mo, leading to a lot of just really awkward shots that would just hang there on these awkward poses, like don't get me wrong, the intros are still great, but Daigo, are you alright man? Are you okay? The Ishin intros felt more like a cutscene specifically designed to have a big impact which slows everything down to give room for epic music to be synced up with the title cards, rather than it just being sort of slopped in there wherever. Which yes, despite the videos I've made where I re-edit the slightly off or completely off in some situations, Ishin actually does a really good job at syncing up the background action to the background music. It also is the first time that they actually did a pretty well done effort in the natural transition into gameplay because admittedly in the games before, after the cutscenes it just kind of goes like, Buff. now you're fighting. So it's pretty good in that regard. Now that Ishin has set this new standard, Zero follows suit by sort of bringing back the camera filter, but instead of it just going in the background, they use a small white vignette and a few frames where the screen is filled with color to add a bit more impact in the animations, with an example like this one in the Massive Man fight. There's also very nice little camera shakes, which once again planted a seed of ideas, which we'll get into in a bit, that makes it feel like the camera guy's about to fall over from the sheer weight of what's going down. Finally, everything else is practically identical to Ishin, although instead of the red circle, it's now pink for whatever reason. We now move on to Kiwami, which only has one, but some of you will likely know that they spliced together the original cutscene before the fight from the PS2 game with a brand new animation for the intro of the fight. It is again identical to the game that came before it, although this time the white vignette is kind of like a multiplier cloning effect. I don't know how to describe it, but it's cool what they did do for this intro. They could have left it at nothing or done something completely different, but instead they decided to do a modern take on the original intro, because in the PS2 game, the music in the cutscene actually syncs up with Kiryu's eyes opening, which is a nice touch, but after that it would fade to black and then we'd just fight Nishiki. Unfortunately in Kiwami, you can very clearly see the part where it transitions from cutscene to intro, by the weird lag spike that I always get. But with the new music they used in the fight, they added that big sound effect to sync up with Kiryu's eyes rather than using the song. Obviously the English PS2 version has- Bring that shit, Kazuma. But when people try to pretend that fading to black and then having a static image is better than this, then they are just lying and I can safely say that because anyone who disagrees with me will be forced to duel with me atop the Millennium Tower. Now, while it does come out a fair while after Kiwami and Zero, Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise has fairly comparable intros to these two games, just with a different styling to the text, but I hate that game so I'm not going to talk about it, suck my dick. Taking what they had learned over the years, RGG Studio move on to the Dragon Engine games, and once again reinvent the wheel with the Yakuza 6 intros. Weirdly, how they tended to start was that there would be a cutscene before the intro, and then it would just freeze as it loaded the cutscene of the intro. But with these intros, they added something that I am a massive fan on, being this absolutely delicious camera shake that syncs up with the text, obliterating the screen, and once again toppling the poor camera guy. But besides that, you've got the standard nice camera work, posing and animation quality that we've come to expect from the Yakuza games. The fights that have the little emblems do the same thing as Ishin Zero and Kiwami, with the little spin into a fade, and behind it all, they've brought back the filter, this time being an extremely obvious blue, although thankfully it doesn't distort the image in any way like the original intros did. Another evolution of the transition into gameplay can be observed by the most astute Yakuza fans with the keenest of eyes. If you look very carefully, you can notice when the cutscene models and lighting are swapped with the gameplay models and lighting. And when I say that, 
I mean, it's really obvious. There's this extremely obvious white flash that they do. Although the reason for this is that they would typically swap to the gameplay assets without cutting the camera because in most cases there would just be one continuous shot and rather than just having a cut, they would have a very brief flash of white. So it's not that bad. Yakuza 6, again, sorry to spoil things, has probably my least favorite intro in the series. And when I say that, I mean everything before the main event. What am I talking about exactly? Well, I mean the Iwami fight where Kiryu and Iwami are just standing there doing shit all while everyone else just scrambles around like they're playing eight player smash with no concept of what any of the buttons do but besides that it's pretty cool kiwami 2 does things the exact same way besides having four notable differences the first one that feels a bit more placebo than anything is that the camera shake in yakuza 6 was a bit more up and down jerks so to speak rather than in kiwami 2 where it kind of goes a bit more to the left and right this is the part where I reiterate that these are notable differences, not noticeable differences. The second one is that in Yakuza 6, because Japanese people have the reading ability of gods, the title cards in 6 appear on screen for an average total of 0.2 seconds. Thankfully though, Kiwami 2 does leave things up for typically longer, especially in the PC port of the game where the intros just shit themselves and slow down to about one frame per second, which isn't a performance thing before you say it. The third difference is that rather than the emblem spitting into place, they simply would collapse down like they would in the older games, albeit a lot faster. Finally, the painfully obvious cut to gameplay assets is instead done by just having the camera cut to a different angle where it is done within that cut. Sometimes it's actually really hard to tell when it does the transition, which is very well done by them, except for the second last Ryuji fight because they have the white flash again for whatever reason, but it's really good besides that. Up next, we have some intros that are now completely different, but still for the most part, the exact same. That's of course the Judgment and by extension, the Lost Judgment intros. Now they all follow the same basic principles of previous entries being a cutscene that transitions naturally into gameplay. However, for these games, the title cards are handled rather differently. Instead of the expected Skidoo font splashing the name and the emblems if they have them, onto the screen, there's a little orange line that appears with a bit of fancy visual effects and a whoosh, and then, there it is. The font used is Aphasia BT, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I think so. And oddly enough, in Judgment it's all in uppercase, and in Lost Judgment it has proper punctuation for whatever reason. This style of intro is also applied to standard street encounters, although rather than being in the center, it is in the bottom left corner of the screen. There's no camera filter, thank god, and unless you're a nerd who wears glasses like me, you usually can't notice the transition to gameplay assets that the other games completely struggle with. Although there are some instances where the lighting just completely changes, and it's very obvious. But that's just in Judgment because they do a lot better of a job in Lost Judgment thankfully. There's also no more of the sick camera shake and sync with the title cards that was prevalent in Kiwami 2. They also also fall a bit short in their capability to just hold on to a shot for more than three frames so that music syncs better with the action, but they do get a bit closer a couple of times in Lost Judgment, especially with the final, in quotation marks, fight of the Kaito files where it syncs phenomenally well because the devs secretly watch my videos on YouTube. <laughs> Finally, we have something even more different to the other styles, that being the style used in Lucky Dragon slash Yakuza 7, which more likely than not will also be used in Yakuza 8 when it eventually comes out. Just like Judgment, it ended up doing something completely different, yet still the same. But then exactly like Judgment, they added fancy visual effects to the title cards, and Lucky Dragon goes absolutely balls out with them. The iconic pink slash red ring from Ishin, Zero, and Kiwami is back, although this time it's an absolutely sick looking ring of fire. The emblems, rather than flying or spinning in, do this little burn in fade in thing that shows the outlines of whatever symbol is there for them to fill in when the text slams onto the screen. As the text flies in, it's red at first, and then after landing, so to speak, it fades to white, creating the iconic looking title cards we all know and love. The old style filter is back, this time purple, this time making the shot a bit darker, and also this time retaining the slight distortion effect it once had. This sexy camera shake from 6 and Kiwami 2 still exists, although behind all the visual effects, it's actually fairly hard to notice. I prefer the over-the-top extremity of 6 and K2, but this still looks pretty good in my opinion. Like a Dragon also has a very obvious transition into gameplay assets, except this time it's more likely than not intentional with the speed and the bright-ass beams of light that shine upon the characters. We're not really a fan of the animations of the intros, but oh man, if I could just learn how to recreate those effects and chuck them over some of the fights from the other games, oh. I'd be bloody golden. The final observation actually relates to the final bosses of all the games. It's not exactly a very concrete observation, but have you ever noticed that the final boss of every game that has a dynamic intro has the player character and the boss themselves either colliding in some way or they're about to collide in some way? The only exception to this rule is like a dragon, but let's be real, Tendo's the actual final boss of the game, so he does fit that theme. It might not be entirely true, but maybe it's a Nagoshi thing, so who knows, in Yakuza 8 we may see something completely different. Speaking of which, I really hope that in Yakuza 8 we actually see the party members in the intros and that they don't mysteriously vanish during them, but we'll just have to wait and see. Regardless, every dynamic intro of the Yakuza series, no matter how absurdly long, absurdly short, or how insanely awkward the posing is, 
They all do an amazing job at hyping up the fight that's about to go down, but the effect that the intros have just on their own is something that people can look at and aim to replicate to add impact to a whole variety of things. I mean, for example, if you want to spice up your school presentation, you can do a Yakuza 3, 4, 5 style intro, or maybe you want to make a meme about uh, blah, 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 Joe Biden, you can do that with maybe an Ishin Zero Kiwami style intro. Maybe you want to share some unfortunate news? Use a Like a Dragon style intro with the fire particles going everywhere and shit. Or perhaps you want to make the most underappreciated joke you've ever made on your entire YouTube channel with a Judgment style intro. Or maybe what you really want to do is create a cool outro for your video about intros with a Yakuza 6 slash Kiwami 2 style one. Like this for example.